Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today is going to be the lab going over the model of the brain. So in this video here, I'll just play it just to show you how the different angles I got with this video and how we're gonna look at it here. So this is the model we have in the laboratory. And so we're gonna go through, we're gonna label the different lobes on the uh, superficial part of the brain. Uh, so for the cerebral cortex, and then we will go down inside uh, and look at the interior parts of the brain. So we're gonna look at all the different fissures, the sulci, um, so the grooves, the gyri, which are the ridges. So we're going to look at all that in this video today. And then we go over here. And then the second part is where we go to the deep structures of the brain. We're labeling all the stuff inside there, such as the thalamus, hypothalamus, and whatnot in different parts of the brain stem. And then that's just showing another version of a model that we have in the laboratory. So we can get right into this now, starting with the exterior portion of the brain. Uh, so let's bring it here. So it's about in the center. This seems like a good spot right there. All right, let's start labeling it now. So what all lines do we want to draw here? First one will be the lobes. So we have a couple different lobes on the brain. Uh, we have one in the back here, kind of highlighted in yellow. So we'll label that one. So I'll draw the lines first and we'll go back and label them all. Uh, then we have on the left and right side of the brain, we have two different lobes as well. So we'll label that one. And then the front of the brain, we have a lobe. And on the side here, we have one as well. Let's just draw that one down to here. And then there's one that's deep in here too. We'll draw, oops, let's go back. Cause I know I need to have another line in there. So we'll, we'll just draw that one down to there. All right, let's label the major lobes. Might as well label this one while we're at it too. So getting out the pen now, the lobe on the back of the brain, this is the occipital lobe. So if you remember the bones of the skull, that was also the occipital bone back there. Now on the left and right side, just like the parietal bones, this is, these are the parietal lobes. Remember all these words would have a lobe after them too. On where we have the frontal bone, that's the frontal lobe. One on the side here, we have the temporal bone and it's the temporal lobe. But all kinds of, all kind of comes together now, if you remember all the previous information we've learned. And then if you go deep inside here and you'll see it orange on this model coming up here, uh, this is called the insula. I'm just gonna put in parentheses as just a reminder that this is deep. It's not shown superficially here. And then on the back of the brain, uh, the little structure on the back side here, this is the cerebellum. All right, that's the initial parts I wanted to label in this image. The second parts I wanted to la label in this image are the different sulci and grooves. So let's just go up here to this part of the image and let me draw something real fast up here. So here we have these different ridges that form, these different grooves that come in. And then sometimes these grooves are deeper and then they form other pockets here. So I just wanted to label some of these parts real fast. So a bump is a gyri or a gyrus if it's singular. Um, and then a little fissure here. So this one here is a um, sulcus. So I said a fissure, but a little groove is a sulcus. A deep groove is then a fissure. And then there would be another uh, gyrus as well. Now also one thing I wanted to highlight here is that on the cortex, remember, there's this layer of gray matter on the outside. So it's a superficial gray matter layer. So that's uh, gray matter. And then this is all white matter inside that. Um, so go back to the lecture portion as a refresher on that. Just want to bring a little reminder here of the differences between a fissure, a sulcus, a gyrus, gray matter, and white matter. Now let's label the different important ones on the brain. So the big one is the one that separates left and right hemispheres. Uh, we'll draw that one right here. And as I played this video and turn it around, you can see it in the middle. Uh, now there's also one that separates the parietal lobes from the frontal lobes. So right there's one half, and then right there would be the other half. Uh, then there's one that separates the temporal from the frontal and parietal going up right through here. So we'll draw a line to that one. And then there's a separation between the cerebellum, temporal, and occipital on the back side here. So we'll draw one to that fissure as well. So uh, these are the important ones, so let's label them now. The first one that separates left and right is the longitudinal fissure. Uh, I will write fissure here. 
the one that separates the uh, frontal from the parietal, this is the central sulcus. And then the one that separates temporal from parietal is the lateral sulcus. And then back here, the one that separates the cerebellum from the occipital and the uh, temporal is the transverse cerebral sulcus or fissure. Yeah. Transverse cerebral fissure. All right, this is the first image I wanted to take here with all the different labels we have for the outer part of the brain. So I'm going to clear this now, and we are going to move forward here and look at the internal structure. So just as I move this video around here, you can see that longitudinal fissure there separating left and right hemispheres. Uh, you can see that there's a transverse cerebral uh, fissure on the back there. And now this brain model does label, so like the... Um, locations of where some of these somatosensory sensations and motor functions are. But we talked about that in the lecture portion. Uh, then on the underside here, we're going to be labeling all these cranial nerves in a future laboratory. So I'll be using the same video then as we label those cranial nerves. So those are part of the peripheral nervous system. So we'll get back to those later. And now we can move into the deep regions of the brain here. Let's find the part where we're centered. Right there is perfect. All right, now let's draw all of our lines. Now I will warn you, there are a decent amount of labels in this section here, and we will go through each one though. All right, so starting, you know, in the central region here, um, we'll start right here. Now, not everything will be labeled. I'm just labeling the important ones that we talk about in class or in lecture. Uh, so right now I'm just drawing a bunch of lines so I can remember to label everything, and I already kind of drew them on another image, so I got my spacing down so I didn't have to edit too much while making this video. So to kind of give you an idea of where to put all these lines for what we're labeling here. <laughs> and then we'll talk about them as I go through this, and I think that will help a lot. Um, and then uh, down here, brainstem regions, or spinal cord, uh, here is, a ventricle that's labeled now inside the cerebellum um, the central region has a special name it's called the arbor vitae of the cerebellum um, up here there's some there's two little uh, these little spots on this model are the corpora uh, quadrigeminus uh, then up here this little yellow dot is the pineal gland this little uh, red region right here is the choroid plexus, which is what's producing cerebral spinal fluid. There's also one that's down in this region, but it's not on this model. Um, I think that's everything I need to label here. Now, let's write it all in. So the first one up here, uh, pointing to this region right here, so surrounding the inside, this is called the fornix. Uh, and then on the inside, that little spot right there um, is the interthalamic adhesion. So interthalamic adhesion. Now I also forgot a line. Uh, might as well just add it right here is the main egg shaped part in the middle, which is of course, if this is the interthalamic adhesion, this is then the thalamus. So can't forget that one. Uh, then out here, this little space Right here, this is the septum uh, pellucidum. So we talked about all these in the lecture too. So this is just labeling their locations. Just make sure I spell it right, pellucidum. And then right here, this is what connects the left and right hemispheres. This is a, an important one, it's the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. Uh, then below the thalamus here, we now, now go to the hypothalamus. Then this little stalk that comes down the hypothalamus connects to a little gland down here, which is drawn to this line. This is the pituitary gland. Now, and then there's also a nuclei over here. This is called the mammillary body. Uh, we'll get to the brainstem last. Uh, let's finish up here in this little region as we're working our way through here. Remember, this is the choroid plexus. It's what produces 
the cerebral spinal fluid. And then this little spot right here, this is the pineal gland, which is found in the epithalamus. And then these little spots right here, these are the corpora, corpora quadrigeminas. Corpora uh, quadrigemina. And now the cerebellum, like I said earlier, this is the arbor vitae. Arbor vitae, or the tree of life in a way. It looks like a tree structure. It looks more like a bush, though. Of, or I'll just write of cerebellum, because I didn't label the cerebellum in this one. And then this is the fourth ventricle. I know I didn't label all the ventricles on this one, but this one is the easiest to see in this model. Fourth ventricle. Now let's go to the midbrain and the brain stem. First here, we have the spinal cord coming up into the brain. So this is just spinal cord down here. We'll get to this one in the next video, going over the anatomy of a spinal cord. Uh, next, moving up here, we have the medulla oblongata. Right here, medulla oblongata. Oops, I don't want that there. And then the rounded structure right here, this is the pons. And then this region in here, this is the midbrain. All right, that's everything I needed to label on this one. So if you want to take a screenshot, now would be the time to take it of this region. So you have these labels down. These are the important ones that I could potentially label on the practical. So make sure you have these down. I'm going to erase it erase them now and then finish just playing the rest of this video here. That's all I wanted to label, just focusing on the outside of the brain and the inside of the brain and the different sulci and fissures that are important. So this model here also is showing some different things that are labeled. Um, and some different colors. So you'll see those different models from the laboratory brains, but overall it's the same things on each one. Um, so that is all I have for this video. So I'll let it play out here. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, just send me an email or put them in the comments below. Uh, but with that, I will see you all next time and I hope you all have a great day and bye-bye.